Hey folks, uh, this video today is going to run through how the analog axes are configured in the Verpal software. I'm going to go through more in depth of what I've briefly glanced over in the uh, previous videos, so it'll give you a better understanding of how you basically adjust, calibrate and do other fiddly things with the axes. Right, uh, let's have a, a basic overview of the axes uh, tab on the software. Okay, so I've selected my Warbird, I'm in the Axes tab, and this is what's currently being displayed. This tab here, this box, which actually goes way the hell out over here, is basically just display only. It's, it's outputting what things or configurations are set and what values are being read. So, starting from left to right, we have an identifier number for each of the rows, and then name. Uh, for each of the axes, so that's Y, X, and Z. Next column is the precision, so this is 13 bit and this is 12 bit precision. This is the value that is being output. This column here is the current percentage of travel. For example, if I were to grab this one, which is the little brake lever, move it backward and forward, you can see the values change. Also note here that the, these are the raw values changing as well. We're not too concerned about this. This just basically means it's an actual VPC sensor. This is what port and uh, connection it's basically wired into. So we don't really care about that. This one here is uh, an invert basically. So it swaps the axes around. The offset, which is set for both the Y and the X, basically denotes that there is an offset center position. That's what the axis type is. Now, if you look at the Z, it doesn't have that. And the reason being is because it's a, a gripper. It doesn't have a center position it stops at. So it's set to false for both the uh, invert and the offset. The next column is the smoothing factor. Uh, smoothing basically takes the raw value and averages it by it looks like it must be four times for this and eight for this one here to return these values which end up in this column. This is just the raw data that's being read from the A to D. Don't care about that. These next ones are the calibration. So you have a calibration min, calibration mid, and calibration max. So that's set up from doing the calibrate axis things. The other ones that uh, are the, the next ones to sort of look at are the dead zones. So you have a dead zone min, a mid, and a max for each of the axes. So let's let's go and have a closer look at one of these. We'll go and look at the Y. Okay, so here we have this part here, the joystick logical setup. So the axis name for this is Y. Precision is 13 bit. These are the currently red values. The axis source, that's a drop down, and that can be multiple different types. Uh, right now it's VPC sensor, which basically means that it is a axis sensor from Verpal, and these are the ports it's connected to. Uh, that's a smoothing, which I talked about. Okay, uh, let's have a wee look at these two, inversion and offset. First thing we'll do, we'll change the inversion. I'll save it. Now this, I have not clicked this yet, so nothing will change so far. So what I'm going to do here for the y-axis that we're looking at, I'm going to pull it back. So I pull it all the way back, it's 100%, back to the center, 50%, and all the way forward equals 0%, and then back to the center, take my hand off it. So all the way back equals 100, all the way forward equals 0. And I'll just save what I changed. And I'll do the same again. So I'm pulling it back. Now previously this was 100%. As you can see, it's basically swapped the axes around and inverted them. Back to the center. Center is still 50. Forward, instead of being zero, is now 100. So that's basically what that does. Now the next thing to look at is the offset. Both the X and the Y axes have the offset triggered, or sorry, ticked, because they have a center position. Without this, if I were to untick this and then try to use a joystick, it would do all sorts of weird and wacky stuff. I'll just put the inversion back on and the offset off to show you. 
So currently, the joystick's sitting in the center position. So yeah, right now it's weird. It's sitting at 100% in the center. Now push it forward, nothing at all happens. I pull it back. This is the main stick I'm talking about. It just goes, just goes from zero to 100% about at about the half back position. So basically, that makes your joystick not work. So don't mess with it. Put the offset back on. Okay, let's run through a couple of these other things here. This is for doing your calibration. Now, as you've seen in the previous tab, the previous window, uh, you can run through the calibration and this basically allows you to do it again. It also allows you to change different types of centering. So you can start your calibration, move it about, set your center and then stop it. I haven't used this, I don't see any need to. I mean, maybe it's just handier if you want to calibrate one specific axis at a time and leave the other ones unmolested. I'm assuming that's why they've done this. So it is possible to calibrate a single axis without having to do the whole lot. So that's why this is here for each of the individual axes. Next, we'll have a look at dead zone. So a dead zone basically gives you a point around near where the, near where the center is where you can move the joystick a slight amount and it will not pick up any movement and will not transmit it onto windows. Um, the default values are 222 and you can make them larger if you want. Verbal themselves recommend you don't make them smaller because it will make the joystick extremely, extremely twitchy. Uh, we'll cover this stuff in the axes uh, mapping section uh, and the other part of the video. Uh, not too sure what the activate zoom is. I have no documentation on it. I have no idea and I haven't played with it much yet. Same with this mixer section. Do not know what this does. If you do, please reply. Curve, we'll cover that later on. That gives you your response curves to make the joystick uh, operate differently. So that's your sort of overview of the two main tabs for each of the, um, each of the individual axes. Save that back. And put the joystick back to being normal. So in this part, I'll show you how to do the basic calibration on the joystick. I currently have a Warbird with a um, mongoose grip on it. Uh, it's a right-hander because I'm right-handed. So let's bring up the software, select the right device. Okay, we're on the MT50. We're in the Axis tab because that's what we're interested in today. And let's go and do a calibrate. So just basically click the calibrate Axis button. Now what you have to do at this point is to move the joystick through its full range. So I'm gonna go forward, backward, Move the stick to the all the way to the left, all the way to the right. And then I'm just going to do the diagonal. So I'm going to go top left, over to top right, bottom right, bottom left, all the way to top left again. And then let the stick go to the center. Now the other axis we need to do is a little gripper. That's our little, well, brake lever for want of a better descriptor. We'll just move up forward and backward. Take my hand off the stick for a few seconds, let it settle. And just click that button there to basically save the settings. Now that doesn't actually save the settings on the device yet. It saved it in the configuration software as I explained in the concept. You have this configuration that you have active right now that you're playing around with. But that's not what's actually on the stick. So when we've done the calibration, we click this button here. And that saves the information back to the stick. Automatically, each time it does a save, it reloads the profile back from the stick and then puts it into the configuration software. So uh, that's basically the calibration setup now on my uh, joystick. You can see that I'm not touching it and it's nice and stable. It's sitting at 50%, which basically means the joystick's perfectly centered. The Z axis here, which is the little little brake lever it's currently set at zero percent because it's all the way forward and that's just the way it should be so that's it that's how to do the very basic calibration on your uh, verbal joystick
Right, uh, let's have a look at calibrating the throttle now. Let's bring up the software. Let's go and select the throttle. So it connects to the throttle, pulls out the current values, loads them into the software, and I'm ready to begin. So we go to calibrate axes. Oh, one note. Uh, to, to, to fully make sure you're, you're calibrating everything, what you should do is on the throttle, there's a little slider that locks the two throttles together. Unlock them, so slide it to the right and push it forward, and that's in a recessed position. And now you're ready to actually do the uh, calibration of the axes. So I'm going to start work my way from top left all the way around to bottom left in the clockwise motion. So left throttle, backward forward fillet, leave it in the zero position. Right throttle, forward, backward, forward, backward. Now there's a little rolly wheel that's on the right hand throttle. I'm going to put that all the way back, all the way forward, leave it at the center position. Next I go to the analog lever that's in the top right hand corner, forward, backward, backward, forward. Then uh, there's the rotaries which are A1 and A2. So I turn A1 all the way to the left, then all the way around to the right and put it in the center. Do the same with A2 all the way to the left. All the way around to the right, put it back in the center, and just let everything sort of settle for a second. And then click the set center and save the profile button. Now, the only thing we'll have to do now after setting these values up is to save the device data back to the device. And that's the calibration done for the uh, throttle now. All right, there's something else I want to touch on uh, regarding the throttle. Now in the VPC manual, there is a little table at the end of things that are to do. And on one of them is to do with the uh, throttle locking switch. So I'll just cover that now. So, on your uh, verbal throttle, there's a little slider that locks the two axes together of the, th the main throttle stick. And I um, just want to cover how it operates. If we go to the button tab, and I now slide it. Now, right now, it's currently locked. So, if I slide it to the right to unlock it, you'll notice that a button goes active. So, there's actually a tiny little switch attached to that slider. I'll just let it go. And it goes inactive. So, what does this do? Well, as you see in there, it's button one. So this configuration tab here basically means that if button one is off, then I would like you to take the data, analog data being read from analog axis one, and then copy it into analog axis two. So basically what this means is when this switch is in place, the data from one is automatically copied into two. So it basically ignores whatever the uh, R Y axis is doing and that way there whenever you have them locked together and you push it forward or pull it back even though there's a slight physical difference of a few millimeters between the two sticks that the actual data that's sent to windows will be 100% identical so if you're in a A10 for example or an SG27 in DCS that has independent engine control you can be guaranteed that when you push it forward both engines are exactly at the same value so that's what that little feature does. So we've completed the calibration on both the joystick and the throttle. Now would be a very good time to create a backup of our current configuration. Now, in the software here, this load device profile basically loads the information, the configuration from the device itself into this program, save, we'll obviously save it from this program back to the device and also the software has an import and an export function. Import allows you just to pull in a, a configuration file and load it into the program and then you can click save which will put, put that information directly onto the device and we can export. And what, the, what all it basically means is whatever configuration is currently selected here whether it's joystick or throttle 
allow us to export that data to a file and then if we want to we can import it again later the reason i'm going to show you this is because if you've just been through the process of calibrating your joystick it might be a good idea to take a backup of the current configuration in case you mess around with something and you balls it up and that way there you can import this backed up profile and then it saves you having to go through the calibration again because right now both my devices are fully calibrated so let's export the file we'll start off with the one we're currently selected which is the warbird so this is the vpc folder where the vpc software lives i'm going to create a new folder i'll call it back up and i'm going to give the file a name so currently we're on the warbird so yeah i'm going to call it warbird mt50 the other configuration it's the default one and i'll just put calibrated this this program remembers the last uh last file name you use so that's currently the last one i was fiddling around with so we'll just save this out and call it calibrated vpc warbird so that means if i mess around and cock something up on this joystick all i have to do is click import go to my backup folder pick a right one open it load it into the program and then save it back to the device and i'm back to the way it was when it was all nicely set up and not fucked up now i'll just do the same for the throttle so it's loading the profile from the device into the software and now i do an export to file a backup and this one i'll make sure i call it throttle And there we go we've backed up the profiles with both my verbal devices so now i can play around with them to heart's content and know that if i mess something up i can quickly restore it back to the way it was the verbal software also allows you to use curves and create response curves for the joystick axes what it basically means is that by default you normally have a linear relationship between movement and actual amount of movement reported to windows a curve will actually adjust that for example if you were doing air to air refueling you might want to have high precision toward the um just off the center position of the joystick so it allows you to maneuver more accurately I'll just run through how you do curves on the verbal software. Okay, so we'll go off and select our joystick because that's more likely we're going to be wanting to put curves on. Okay, so here are your three axes, your Y, X, and your Z, your Z being your uh, brake lever. So we want to maybe put our response curve on the X or the Y. So what we do is we double click and that brings us to this little hidden window. So we're just going to play around to do a quick curve. So the curve setting stuff is down here. So I'm going to do what's known as a symmetrical curve, which basically means that when I make a change, it mirrors it across both sides of the axes. So I'm going to change the values. See, by default, they're all set to 100. I'm going to put these to a different range of values. Uh, I'm going to use some old values I used for another config. I'm going to go 1. Now you notice as I enter these values along, this changed the funky looking curve. right that gives us a nice sort of smooth curve there now what that basically means is toward the center of the stick if i start moving it i'm gonna get um less deflection so i'll have a bit more precision at the lower end as i move out toward more deflection then it will become more pronounced because basically this is the sort of zone where you want to be more precise you can put these values to whatever you want. This basically graphs out and shows you what sort of cur response curve you're going to get. Uh, you can use these increment or decrement buttons to change them or just type them in directly. It's entirely your choice. 
So this is just set up a response curve for the Y axis. It's going to go save and you can see straight away it wants us goes yeah okay you made a change here you're probably going to want to send this back to the stick but we'll do the x while we're at it so double click on it go down symmetrical go through this again obviously you can make these numbers whatever you want these were old ones i had lying around from ye oldy il2 days many moons in the past god that was such a good game There, so created a nice, nice smooth looking curve. So this is where we get our higher precision in the center. So we can hopefully air to air refuel like cocking things up. Just click save. So now the thing we have to do is send this data to the device. And there you have it. That's how to quick, quickly set up a uh, curve on the joystick. You can do the same for the throttle, depending on what you're using some of these axes for. It's, it's the same procedure. You basically double click on it. it, brings you into this. You can go down and then set up your curves and do whatever you want. And that's how to do very basic curves. The Verbal software also has a little utility that's built in that allows you to monitor um, what the device is doing. I'll just show you it now. So here it is here, VPC Joy Tester. So, uh, wow, kind of uh, weird looking and it's like, what the hell does all this do? But let's not panic. First off, this is your selector up here. This is what you're interested in. So I'm going to go down to the joystick that I just configured, which is my Warbird. Click on it. And what it's doing now, it's reading the information that the joystick's currently outputting in it and then giving it a graphical display. So right now, this which resembles a, an oscilloscope output, is basically what the axes are doing right now. So if I were to move an axis, for example, I'm gonna grip. So I'm gripping the brake lever right now, and you can see that that orange or that purple line is actually moved up. I grip it. It's about 50%, and I grip it all the way to the top. I'll bring it back down again. So this is what this is basically doing is giving you a graphical representation of what the analog axes are, are doing right now for this particular selected stick, which is my uh, my Warbird. So this one here is the which uh, represents the main axes, which is your X and Y. So if I push the stick forward. And pull it back and I move it over to the right over to the left this gives you a representation of what's actually um, like a over time what what you're uh, what you're outputting so we'll just double click on here that clears it I can kind of do a spiral here gradually moving it further out That returns to the center. Over on this side, you can see it's drawn some crazy stuff. So basically, each one of these axes data is being output to this little graph. And here are the colors for the different axes. You can change these if you want to. And you can also change what you're looking at. I, I just tend to leave it as default. I don't really need to fiddle with it. But it's nice. It shows you basically what the stick is doing currently. I'll just double click and clear this. Also up here, you have your button array. So if I were to start pressing some of the buttons on my stick, because that's the standard red trigger, red trigger to two, a little uh, flip down trigger, number eight. You can see on the right hand side here, it's outputting the uh, timings, so how long the buttons to press for, basically as, as the data goes past. Uh, this over here deals with the normal hat switch. That's the hat switch it would be by, well, for me, I'm right-handed. That would be my right thumb. It's the circular one, not the pyramid-looking boyo. If I just rotate around that, 
and you can see all those showing and I'll reset the stats which clears these as before if you press a button it's red when it's currently still being held and when I take my finger off it it goes to blue to, to, to denote that it was actually pressed so this is the very sort of basic functionality that this this tester thing gives you it's kind of neat like because you can you can see what your joystick's doing as you move it around so for example if you're possibly if your joystick was acting strange or maybe you weren't getting the deflection you were thinking you know you should think you get then you can load this up have a play around with it and actually see what it's doing double click to clear so that's a stick all the way forward and you can see that the yellow axis is all the way depressed i pull it back a little comes back i'm trying to hold the left and right stable but you can see yourself it's wiggling a tiny bit because this thing is very very high precision so that's that's the sort of basics of what this allows you to do it's for basically monitoring and testing things out and seeing what your device is doing you know, a lot of these functions are obviously available down here for especially for the buttons but none of the analog stuff is really uh really in the, the main part of the program this this little boy here does uh, most of the work obviously these are the values being read the percentages etc max min values i'm not too sure what the fps is for to be honest with you it must be to do how many reports per second or something like that but yeah okay that's what that is so i'm rotating the joystick like crazy right now so obviously the more movements that happen the more data is sent by the usb so that must be what that is because you can see the numbers going absolutely bucked off so yeah okay so that's what that means it's only really going to report things when something happens so that's that's this basic overview of that little part of the tool Right, uh, we're going to have a look at another feature of the verbal software and it's called axes to button. It basically allows you to bind a certain position within an axis, an analog axis, and when you reach that position, it will trigger a button press. And when you leave that um, value, it will basically take, your, take the virtual finger off the button, so to speak. So I'll just show you how to do it on a analog axis on the joystick first so select our joystick first off we need to find a button to use so if we go to button and we look down the list right uh, six is not used there's a button six here but it's not actually bound a physical button six is not bound to anything on this so we're good to go and use that one so we have a button to use so what we'll do is we will pick an axis so i'm going to pick z which is the one for the little uh, brake lever that you would grab with your lower fingers on the uh, joystick so that corresponds to axis number three okay select three range uh, i'm going to set this quite high i'm going to go for like i don't know 97 percent to 100 percent so say for example we wanted to simulate having the ability to toggle our like chocks or wheel brakes you know actually lock the wheel brakes as some flight sims allow you to do so if you're in a parking position or something you'd want to obviously lock the brakes so this allows me to use the analog axes up to well i'll still use it up to 100 percent, but at night between 97 and 100 percent, which is quite you know quite far amount of travel what it will do is we'll activate a button press so what i will do is i will set it to button six because i know the physical button six is not currently being used so this will be useful possibly for um locking or toggling your wheel brakes uh i want to say that there's usually analog wheel brake for slowing the aircraft down if you're landing in a plane or something and it usually has maybe an, another brake button to actually lock the brakes into a lock position so axis three which is our uh our little um brake lever between 97 and 100 percent it's going to activate button six 
So we'll just save that back to start off with. So that's the first part complete. We've configured a axis, a percentage, start and stop, and the button we want to use, a physical result button we want to use to actually make something happen. So if we go to the button tab now, now three is going to trigger straight off once I grip this because that is the digital button that is also assigned to this lever. So there you go, I just grip it lightly and there's three. And if I pull it all the way back, and that's obviously, there you go, that's the very tiniest last bit of travel. So that, for example, could be used for doing like a chocks or parking brake. The only other thing we have to do now to finish off this, because this is obviously a physical button, is we need to create a binding in here for the physical button to be to be mapped to a logical button, which then will be sent to Windows, and then your flight sim or whatever you're going to use can use it. So just double click here and I go to physical button six because that's the one we're using. And what it's going to do is when physical button six is triggered, which is gripping that uh, brake lever practically the whole way home, it's going to send button 20 to the system. So I go save and then save device profile. And that's it basically. Now when I grip that particular button, almost, you know, almost 100%, between 97 and 100%, then it's going to trigger that. So I could, for example, be landing the aircraft, pulling pretty hard on the brake, almost like fully. And then when I'm in a parking position, I could just tap it back once. That triggers the parking brake. Now I'm parked. And if I want to release it, tap it back again. That will toggle it off. So that's how you do the basic axes to button on a... Um, on like a normal stick. That's the Warbird I'm using at the moment. Now uh, you can do the same thing with the throttle. So I'll just go to the throttle here. And uh, say for example, I have my, my axes locked right now. So what this means is right now, whenever I push forward, the value from axis one, which is our Rx, is being copied into axis two, which is our Ry. So that's our left and right throttles basically locked together. So for example, if I wanted to do something like a, um, I don't know, for like a, for some of the World War II aircraft, for example, have a WEP, War Emergency Power. Uh, so if there's a button to trigger that, what I could do would be, I would pick the axis, so I'm going to pick axis 1. And I'm going to go from, say, 95 to 100%. And then I need to find a button to bind it against. Now I've already looked on my, th my throttle. The highest physical button number tops out at 65. So I know that 66 is good to use. So what I've done is I've set up the throttle all the way forward from 95, from 100% to 95, or between that band, should I say. It will press and hold button 66. So if I go to the button tab now, and go down, I just need to create a logical, or sorry, physical to logical button uh, binding. So I'll go in here, so we're going to free Logical button 82, so it's not used. Double click on it. Punch in 66. Normal button, just click save. And then go save device profile. Uh, another use for sort of a, a thing like this would be some of the throttles, for example, A10 has a um, all the way back position and then moving forward to an idle. You could actually put that at the lower end, you know, like say, I don't know, 5% or 10%. So if you push the throttle forward past 5 or 10%, it'll automatically press the button that will move the joystick, or the, the virtual throttle within the game to the idle position. And then you can move it backward, you know, backward and forward from that point. So let's just test that out now. So I'm going to push the throttle forward. And there you go. 
pull it back a little bit so that's that's 100% and that's just pushing it back a little and then the button goes inactive so that's how to basically do access to buttons now there is a limitation here and the limitation is you can only do four of these configurations um in my other video where i compared the Purple software and the SciTech software, the SciTech profiling software, you could basically do as many of these as you possibly wanted in the SciTech for all the analog axes. I could have, you know, stupid numbers like 10 individual bands with 10 different button presses on it for one axis. So that's the basics of running through how to actually create a button press whenever an analog axis is moved past a certain point. Right, next thing we're going to go through is the button to axes feature. Now, what this allows us to do is to use digital buttons to create a virtual analog axis, which will then be reported back to Windows. Uh, at the very basic, you're going to need to sacrifice two digital buttons, two buttons on your stick, that will be used for increment and decrement. For it to be uh, slightly more useful, then you'll need to sacrifice a third button for a centering function. I'll go through and show you the two different ways it works, and then you'll can see which one will be more suitable for you. Now, in the manual, the, uh, the verbal guys show you how to you do this on a Cosmo, and the function that they used for this, or feature, should I say, was the scroll wheel. So scrolling the wheel forward with increment, scrolling the wheel back with decrement, and then the third function, which is optional, but I would strongly recommend you use it, is called the centering function, which they used and bound to the press of the, uh, the scroll wheel. Now let's go through and show you how to basically set this up. All right, so I'm gonna do this on my Warbird uh, MT50. So first thing to do is find some buttons we're willing to sacrifice. Now, the reason why I say sacrifice is you're going to have to most likely unbind these buttons from sending commands to Windows and lose the functionality that we'd normally have with them. Now, I've decided uh, the three buttons I'm going to pick on the right hand side of my stick, where my forefinger will be if I take it away from the trigger, there is a rocker that moves forward and backwards, two position switch on the right hand side. I push it forward, 19. Pull it back, I get 17, and then I need a third button. So I'm just going to pick the closest button to that, which is the lower right single button press. So, I've located three buttons. Now what I'm going to do is I'm unbind them from Windows, uh, or from unbind it from sending Windows commands. So over here, we have our physical button to logical button uh, translation table. So I'll go to 18, set it to 0. Go save and next, takes us to 19, go 0, save and next, and lastly 17, I'll set to 0 and then just save. So what I've basically done here is, when, these, when I save this back and when I press these buttons, it will not report any of these button presses, logical button presses that Windows sees, it will do basically nothing. So if that's my free buttons now I can play around with. So let's go to your axes. So, we have three axes that are currently used, X, Y, and Z, Z being the um, grip, whenever you grip the little sort of brake lever. So we'll pick one of the ones that's not used, and we're going to go for number four. So let's go through and let's create our new virtual axes. Just double click on it. So, first thing to define, the logical name for it. So we're going to use the first unused one, which is RX. Next, we can set the precision. I'm going to set it to, let's go to 12, just for, yeah, let's start off with 12. After this, you need to set out the axis source. So we're going to call it virtual, because that's where we're going to be recruiting a virtual axis. And I'm going to set the smoothing to two. Right, so the next thing we have to set is what buttons are actually going to do things. So I'm going to show you the basic functionality first with two buttons. 
I'm going to leave the center one not used. So 19 is forward, 17 is back, which corresponds to increase and decrease. And I'm going to set the step value to something quite low, like uh, three. That's a nice low value. It should give us a smooth curve whenever we press it. And we'll just save. Save device profile. Right, immediately you notice this is set to 50%. Because we did not set a center button, it just defaults and goes, right, 50% is what you're getting. So go to the Joy Tester to see what this looks like. Just make sure you're selecting the right thing up here. I'm on my Warbird. Uh, this is our axis here, which is color red. Uh, you can change it to whatever colors you want. By default, it's this crappy gray color. I set mine to red because red's more badass looking. So I'm gonna press the stick forward. So I'm pressing the button, I'm holding the button now and I'm letting the button go. And when I let the button go, you can see it immediately falls back to the center position. Now I'm going to pull the button back, just wait till this little graph goes around. So same as before, I pull it all the way back, I'm holding the button, I now release the button, and it drops back to center. So depending on what configuration um, you're using, for example, I don't know, an Elite Dangerous per perhaps, you might want to pick one of the buttons where it's the thrust so if you hold it all the way forward you're going at full whack then you take your finger off the button it'll drop back to the zero position which would be not moving forward and if you wanted to, to do a reverse you just pull the button back now it'll take you back and then let the button go and it'll take you it'll basically drop back to the center position now the decor this curve as you see here this curve going up and curve going down that is controlled by two things. It's controlled by the precision and it's also controlled by the step. So fiddling with both of these will change things around. So for example, if I go to a 14 bit resolution and save it back, I keep the step the same. Save device profile. Go to the tester again. Now this time when I press it forward, you can see that the curve is uh, it's less steep. It's taking longer. Take a button off, take finger off the button, and it comes back down. So you can you can see yourself there that it takes longer based on the higher precision because the the step count that you see that I adjusted now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this all the way to the top as soon as it gets to the top press it back and you can see that those those the angles the, the curves basically match you're going to get a sort of sawtooth looking pattern here so taking your finger off the button and also pressing the opposite button you know for increment or decrement and vice versa will move it at the approximately the same speed so you can play around with which precision values you like to make it do this now the third button can be used for a centering function so i'm going to put that back to 12 i prefer 12 because that's, that's a reasonably fast you know movement and i'm going to set the center button to 18 that's the one we haven't used yet. Just click save. Save device profile. Now the first thing you have to do here, because we're not using a basically auto centering, where we have to find a center button. If we don't define a center button, it automatically pops straight to 50% here, as you've seen the last couple of times. Now it's not done at this time because we need to press the center button. So I just press the center button and there she goes to 50%. And if we go back to our tester. Okay, we're rolling along. And I'll just push her forward. Take my finger off. And you notice that nothing happens. So this, this, this does not automatically drop back down to zero. If I want to make it go lower, if I want to decrement, then I push the, or pull the button, take it back. So those are the two 
operational chain, you know, differences between these two different modes. Using a button for centering or not using a button for centering. And if I want to take this to center very quickly, I just press the center button. So it really depends on your needs. Do you need it to automatically go to center if you don't press one of the buttons? Press and hold one of the buttons? Or do you want to have the ability to set an analog value and leave that analog value constantly being sent out to that axis? It, you know, it's courses for courses, depends what you want to do with it. Um, personally speaking, I don't really fly too much Elite Dangerous anymore, so I don't really need this sort of functionality. I probably use my throttle for this sort of stuff. So, those are the differences between the two ways of doing a button to axis. You can play around with your heart's content with your precision and the um smoothing and the step size they get something that matches you i mean if you're finding it's holding you're having to hold the button too long then increase your step value or decrease your precision um or just play around with the two until you get a nice balance in the middle that actually works well for you and what i will do is i will just import the backup profile because basically i don't want to use that function i'll just load in my calibrated profile which we saved earlier and then save it back to the device. So that clears that configuration I was just playing around with.